Ever wondered why Tokyo is splurging a whopping $41 billion on mega projects? Well, buckle up because we're about to dive into the fascinating world of urban development, crazy ideas and the quest for a better city to solve Tokyo's post-war puzzle. Tokyo, home to about 35.8 million people in 2023, is grappling with a significant housing challenge rooted in its post. World War II history. After the war, the city lay in ruins, leaving over 40% of its population without adequate housing. In response, Tokyo's leaders committed a staggering $41 billion to mega-projects aimed at addressing this crisis. The primary objective is to unravel the puzzle of providing homes for Tokyo's immense population. These mega-projects serve as a strategic initiative to not only transform the city, but also cater to the ever-growing housing needs. A bold proposal surfaced from Kano, the chairman of the Japanese Housing Corporation. Rather than opting for conventional land expansion, he suggested an audacious approach, using atomic bombs to reshape Tokyo Bay by blasting a mountain and filling two-thirds of it. This unconventional plan envisioned a vast floating metropolis connected by a highway, presenting a distinctive solution to Tokyo's housing shortage. Following World War II, Tokyo experienced a surge in population, compelling city elites to seek desperate solutions. While contemplating building satellite cities, the uncertainty of people moving to these locations posed a challenge. Kano's daring idea of creating land within Tokyo itself, utilizing atomic bombs to reshape the bay, stirred controversy but presented a bold solution. The proposed plan involved detonating bombs to generate land, filling two-thirds of Tokyo Bay and offering a vast 1,500 square kilometer plot for construction. This marked the inception of the Tokyo Bay Mega Project. Metabolis Vision, Tokyo's $41 billion mega projects unveiled. The Neo Tokyo Plan. In the Neo Tokyo Plan, the main focus is filling the bay with islands and creating eight distinct zones. Architects known as Metabolis, who see cities as living things, bring a unique perspective to this plan. Around the bay, there are four areas, Tokyo City, Saitama, Kanagawa, and Chiba. Kano wants to build a new international airport at Fotsu, connecting the world to a small Chiba fishing village. Next to this airport, there's a huge residential belt spanning the bay. On both sides, there are forests. On the east, there's a big industrial zone with 24 parts, and on the west, more industrial zones separated by strips of forest. The west side is dug 20 meters deep to allow large tankers to dock. There's also a 20 meter canal slicing the bay, connecting Hayeda with the port of Chiba. Kano's plan gets attention, but filling two-thirds of the bay isn't cheap. The head of the Council for Industrial Planning, Matsunaga, takes up the idea, leading to the Neo-Tokyo plan. Instead of large land pieces, the bay is filled with islands, featuring eight zones – commercial, industrial, residential, recreation, and two airports. Ground transportation includes a super expressway, a smaller expressway circling the bay, and a super rapid railway connecting islands and prefectures. While critics voice concerns in the 1960s, Japanese architects introduce a new concept – cities as ever-changing organisms. Metabolists see buildings as cells, roads as nerves, and city functions as organs. They dream of cities resembling giant animals, with buildings blending into the sky and land. These ambitious metabolists have ideas for transforming the bay, Otaka's innovative cityscape. Otaka's vision for Tokyo takes a fresh approach to city planning, and he's the first metabolist to go against the Neo-Tokyo plan. Instead of the conventional method of moving massive amounts of soil, he proposes constructing high-rise apartments on pillars directly above the water. By creating mini islands on these pillars, the need for extensive landfilling is minimized. Otaka's strategic zoning includes industrial areas facing the bay's opening and residential housing on an outer belt interspersed with commercial zones. Transportation is efficiently managed with an inner loop highway and railway. Similar to Konos's plan, an industrial belt is dug 20 meters deep for docking, showcasing Otaka's innovative and credible urban design. Kurokawa's bold concepts. Youthful architect Kurokawa introduces two daring plans for Tokyo. The first imagines the city as a giant organism with hands symbolizing international and domestic communication. Central axes and entrance points define its structure. The second, even more audacious, proposes Ocean City, a connection of helix land units through a giant highway, forming a flexible nervous system. 
This organic structure allows for expansion, retraction and detachment, reminiscent of a slime mold's growth patterns. Despite being deemed unrealistic, Kurokawa's creativity sparks fascination and challenges traditional urban design norms, Higetake's elevated megacity. Higetake elevates megaprojects to new heights with his fascination for floating structures, from hexagons to drifting cylinder cities. His vision for Tokyo Bay includes three interconnected boroughs linked by a massive loop highway. The central grid, a groundbreaking concept, accommodates floating structures connected by an extensive road system. Higetake's plan envisions adaptability and sustainability, allowing redundant elements to be released from the megastructure, a novel solution to urban evolution. Despite their diverse approaches, the metabolist plans share key features. They are expansive, designed to maintain an overall shape even with missing components and interconnected by extensive road networks. These visionary blueprints, though ambitious, suggest a dynamic and living cityscape, challenging conventional urban design boundaries. Kenzo Tange's bold vision. In Tokyo, there's a big plan in the works, and it's led by the visionary Kenzo Tange. His idea is to create a massive city that houses a whopping 10 million people, and it's no ordinary city. This is something out of a sci-fi movie. The linear city concept. Kenzo's plan revolves around what he calls a linear city, built on a massive looping spine. This spine is the backbone of the whole operation. This city is not just a bunch of buildings, it's a carefully thought out structure with A-frame megastructures and hovering buildings, making it stand out like a scene from a futuristic flick. The vertebrae of the city. Each part of this spine is like a segment, a nine kilometer long unit. These segments consist of three decks of looping highways. Imagine roads going in all directions, creating a web of connectivity. But it doesn't stop there. Perpendicular to this major spine are roads leading to A-frame megastructures. These megastructures are no joke, they stand at a towering 138 meters and even have their own artificial ground, inside the spine. Now, what's inside this looping spine? A bit of everything. There are zones for government buildings, offices, shopping spots, hotels, recreation areas, a new central station and a harbour. The buildings inside this spine are no ordinary structures. They're built on pillars, giving them the ability to hover above the ground. Yes, you heard it right. Hovering buildings, connecting cities, Tokyo to Chiba. Much like Kano's earlier plan, Tanga's vision aimed to connect Tokyo City to Chiba on the opposite side of the bay. This intricate connection was crucial for fostering urban growth and accessibility. Kenzo's growth strategy. Kenzo has a different approach to city growth. Instead of the usual radial expansion, he believes in linear growth. It's like how spines and mammals develop over time. And here's the catch. He's putting a big bet on cars. Kenzo thinks the future of cities is all about cars, so his plan depends heavily on them. It's not just about using cars, it's also about controlling them to keep things in order. The dream lives on. While Tangi's plan, like others, remained a dream, Tokyo Bay has seen transformation over the years. The linear city didn't materialize, but over 15% of the bay has been reclaimed. Even in 2022, dreams persist to build on the bay, a testament to the enduring allure of Kenzo Tange's visionary blueprint. The sci-fi city on water might not be a reality, but the echoes of its vision linger. Now you might be wondering, why the need for all these megaprojects? What drove Tokyo to spend a mind-boggling $41 billion on these daring schemes? Is it about space, prestige, or just a relentless pursuit of a better city? So why is Tokyo on this colossal spending spree for megaprojects? What do you think drives this ambitious city's pursuit of groundbreaking urban development? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's unravel the mystery together. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for being here and we'll catch you next time.